Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are starting the Perfecting Page Layout series of videos. Now, in this first video, I'm going to give you a sort of a basic introduction to the page layout tool and also cover some concepts that I think are going to help going forward with the more detailed lessons uh, later on. Now, first of all, the page layout tool in the main uh, tool palette here is this guy here. It looks like a couple of pages. And we click on that, we get the page layout tool, and there is a page layout menu with a bunch of options which we will go over eventually. Now, in my mind, the page layout tool really could be called the page and system layout tool because this is where we're going to deal with both the page and the system. And the way that I like to think about the page layout tool is that we can kind of divide it into three main functions. Uh, we can do things with the page, including the page size, the orientation of the page. So you can, uh, you know, you can have a letter size page in landscape or portrait, um, A4 paper, that sort of thing. Um, but also the page margins. And then the second part is the systems, where we can deal with the, uh, the system margins or the system spacing. Um, so that's the second main function. And then the third main function is the scaling, or what Finale calls resize or reduction. And we can uh, resize or reduce either the page or the systems uh, individually or as a group. So sort of three main things there, the page, the systems, and the scaling, or as Finale calls it, resize or reduction. Now, just to cover a couple of concepts uh, regarding the systems versus staffs, which is, I think is an important thing, place to start here. Now, a system, particularly as it's defined by Finale, is basically you know a series of staffs on a system. I guess it's it is self-explanatory, I guess. Uh, but sometimes it can be confusing because in uh, on a score like this, the first page is is one system, right? So what I'm circling here is one system. Uh, on the second page, this is a system, right? This is a system. Now this each system has a whole bunch of different staves on it, right? But if you look at something like a linked part, you might look at this and say, well, this is a bunch of individual staves, which I guess is true. But more importantly, it's a bunch of individual systems with only one staff on it. Now, the importance of this is that when you start spacing the systems or spacing the music, uh, uh, you know, vertically so that you're avoiding collisions and whatnot. Uh, you know, this is a blank file, so you won't see that type of thing. Um, it, it's it's sort of important to realize whether or not you want to space the systems or space the staffs on a linked part with a single line like this you actually want to space the systems, right? So you can see me actually moving the, the distance between the, the whole systems here. You could theoretically do the same thing with the staves, um, and it will work, but this is not the preferable way to do it, and there's some technical reasons for that, which I may or may not get into, but uh, generally speaking, with a linked part with a single line, you, you want to treat each of these lines as a system, not as a staff. Now, certainly, if you're in a full score like this, you know, changing the spacing of the system is just going to move the entire system up or down on the whole page, right? Uh, so if you need to actually change the spacing between the staves, then you want to use the staff tool to actually move the uh, the spacing of the staff. And I cover you know sp staff spacing exhaustively in the previous series of videos, so definitely check that out. But all of this is to say that it's important to realize when to space the staffs and when to space the systems. Now this gets uh, more critical when you're dealing with things like piano vocal scores, for example, where you actually have multiple systems with multiple staffs on any given page. So you do, you do have to go back and forth between the staff and page layout tool when you're making different changes. So here I'm in the page layout tool, I can change the spacing between the systems, but if I needed to go into the staff tool, I can give my vocal line more room. Um, and you'll notice that when you do that, it will actually change the, uh, the, the spacing of the, the systems below that. So again, it's just important to realize when to use the staff tool and when to use the uh, system tool, or sorry, the page layout tool. Um, when you're when you're dealing with vertical spacing like that, along the same lines, let's talk about scaling because I mentioned that scaling or, or uh, resizing or reduction is an important part of the page layout tool. Now, in Finale, you know, 
thinking from a macro level all the way down to a micro level, we can scale things um, basically from the outside of the score inwards, if you think of it that way. So what we can do is scale the entire page, which if you see where my mouse is circling, basically scales everything within the boundaries of the page. So if I were to go into the page layout tool and do resize page and do something extreme here like 50%, you will see that the entire page gets rescaled. And that includes the systems, right? Um, if I were to undo this, undo, uh, we can do the same thing with the resize staff systems, right? And there's a bunch of things with staff. I, again, I'm gonna get into this in more depth later on, but let's just use the resize system function here, go to 50%. And you will get sort of a similar result, but you'll notice something strikingly different. The titles don't change size when you do it this way. This is because when you use the page scaling, again, you're uh, rescaling everything within the boundaries of the page. When you're using the system scaling, you're only rescaling everything within the boundaries of the system. Now, in both cases, that includes the size of the individual staffs. It includes the size of the text within the system. It will include the notes and rests when there are notes and rests there. So it's sort of just important to know when to do what. For my money, I almost always use the resize staff systems versus the resize page for these larger changes to the scaling of the score itself. And when we go even further in, it is possible to resize a single staff. And for this, we actually have to use the resize tool, which I've never talked about in this series, but um, doing this would just actually resize just that single staff within the system. And then we can even go further if we need to. We can resize individual notes. We can resize basically anything uh, can be resized uh, to a certain degree. So uh, again, it's just sort of important to realize the difference of you know the, the scope of the resizing. Again, for my money, when you need to deal with the size of the uh, the staffs or sort of uh, you know how hot, how big the staffs are relative to the, with the page i always go for the staff system type of reduction numbers and again i'll talk about this much more in depth in one of the later videos now there's one more important concept i want to talk about in this video right off the bat and that's the difference between uh, the page format and the page layout um, now, in the next video, I do a subscriber request video that deals with this issue in depth, and it's it's a great video that, I, that I'm putting next in this series so that you can see this. So I'm going to gloss over this a little bit, but just to sort of summarize what's going on, if I go to the page format, and there's one for the score or all of the parts, so we'll choose the score for now. When you go to the page format, you'll get options for everything that the page layout is capable of doing, basically. So you have the page size, the orientation, the scaling of the page, the system, you have the system margins, you have the page margins, right? So this is basically covering everything that the page layout can do all in one shot. The difference between making changes here versus making changes in the page layout menu directly with those uh, functions is that the settings in the page format for score or for parts is only the default settings. And Finale will only consult these default settings when it generates a new page. So for example, if I were to make a change here to letter size in the page format score and click OK, nothing happens until I add measures. So let's say I'm gonna add eight measures here. And you'll see that now all of a sudden I've added eight measures, but it generated a new page based on those new settings from the page uh, uh, format, right? Because I changed it to letter here. So this is, um, it's, it is an interesting and constant frustration of users. And I uh, cover this in depth in the next video. So I do want you to check that out. Um, but su suffice it to say that again, these are the default settings that Finale will consult when it generates new pages and systems. Everything that you change here are basically overrides to the page format. So, you know, you can use the page layout to make local changes to either the systems or the pages, including the page size. So you can have, <laughs> you know, you can have a score with different page sizes. It's, it's bizarre, but Finale is flexible enough to allow you to do that. The other important piece of this is what Finale uh, calls the redefine pages. And what this does is it will take 
any series of pages that you choose from this submenu here. So either the current page of the current part or score you're viewing, or the, all the pages of the current part or score, the left or right pages, or even selected pages where you can choose uh, any, you know, a page range, you know, one through five or something. And then what this will do is it will redefine those pages that you choose to match the page format settings. So if I were to do that here, redefine pages, all pages of current part score, uh, it will always give you this warning. What you'll see is that now it will actually redefine all of those pages to the incorrect setting, or the I guess it's correct now, because I set it that way in the score, so now it's set to letter. So again, doing this the other way, if I were to do, uh, actually doing this the other way, let's do this. Um, let's change the page size here from letter to legal, right? So now I'm going to change all of the pages uh, from letter to legal, all pages, select, select OK. And now it's reverted all of these pages back to legal, including that very last page. However, it has not changed the page format. You'll see that it still says letter. So if I were to go ahead and change um, or add another page, it would add a letter sized page. So again, you'd have to go in here and check legal, but there's other ways around this. Again, I cover this in depth in the next video, so I'm sort of glossing over this a little bit, but just to uh, kind of uh, present that concept off the bat, it's really important to know how these two things function together, the page format versus the page layout. Now again, with all of these things, including the page size, the resize, the system margins, page margins, um, I'm going to get into all of that stuff much more in depth in the coming videos. So um, I hope this has helped us sort of clear up a few concepts so that we can really have a, a strong base of knowledge going forward with those more detailed videos. All right, so the next video you're going to see is that subscriber request video that deals more specifically with this, um, <laughs> this, this silliness that is the page format versus the page layout. And then after that, I'm going to start dealing with um, page size and page margins more specifically and more in depth. So I hope you'll come back for both of those videos soon. And once again, I appreciate you uh, joining me today. So thanks for watching, and I will see you soon on the next video.